All right, so uh, my name is Robert Ross. People tend to refer to me as Bobby Tables uh, for the XKCD comic. Uh, one day, they just walked into ro to the room and they said, hey, Bobby Tables. And I had never seen this before, but it seems to work pretty well. My mom didn't know SQL inj injections, though. And uh, so this talk is about a gem I made. It's called Tablecloth. And it's a really easy way to represent HTML tables with Rails. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely hate making HTML tables. They suck, but they represent data incredibly efficiently, and unfortunately, we're uh, still stuck with them. So uh, the idea of tablecloth actually came from the one-liner that I love about uh, simple, simple form is what you get simple table for. So that's where this syntax was kind of stolen from, and you actually give it a class, and it knows how to interact with and actually generate your table. And that class is a very simple DSL. Uh, that's who I am. I work for a company called Philosophy in Venice. For some reason, we skipped this slide. Sorry for the technical difficulties. I'm also a crazy cat lady at heart. That's another thing interesting about me. I've done this twice, actually. It's one thing I forgot to mention. I hate tables so much, I've written this in PHP and Ruby. So uh, if you are a PHP fan and in your, you're in here and you're using CakePHP as your primary framework, there's one called CakeGrid. It's on my GitHub. It's at uh, github.com slash bobbytables. Don't know how I got that. Jack Dorsey won't give me the Twitter one, but whatever. OK, so this is how we do tables right now with Rails. This is you define your T body, your T head, and it's really, this is ugly. And it's not really easy to add data to it. You have to add data twice most of the time. You have to add it to the header, and you have to add it to the body. And also formatting in this, when you start doing uh, IAT9 with dates or you know, any other type of data that you're storing, this can get really, really out of hand really quickly. This is the simplest example, and it's still not good. So again, this is what this strives to fix. This is what this fixes. So, and another thing when generating tables, a lot of time you'll be doing tables within admins that you only want to see data for particular users. You have certain permissions set up. And you'll start to do something like this. You have a T head and you have a TH where it only will show up if the current user is currently an admin. Well, you have to do that twice with tables, so you have to do it again. And that sucks a lot. So to fix that, Tablecloth incorporates a conditional DSL that you can do a condition on your column, and you define that method within your table. And view is actually given to you through tablecloth. So you can actually call anything that you would call within your view in Rails. So in this case, current user, which is a pretty common idiom, uh, and admin. If that ad user is an admin, that condition succeeds. Darkest secret will appear in your table. Pretty simple. Uh, Tables with tablecloth are extendable. So what does that mean? That means if you have a table that is used on your front end, let's say you're browsing packages, uh, but in the back end you want to be able to add actions to your packages or whatever, uh, you, can actually, you don't have to redefine a table again. You can actually just extend from a previously one that you've defined, and you can add actions to it. So actions take uh, a block arity of one or two. The second one is view, but we're not going to use that in this example. Uh, the first parameter is user, so edit user path, link to edit. Uh, that block is run in the context of action view. So you get all of your view helpers and any other methods you may have defined in helpers elsewhere. Uh, configuration. So one thing that was actually a struggle that Brendan uh, nailed me on a couple of times is that it wasn't con configurable enough. So I actually kind of went uh, balls to the wall with configuration. You can do, you can configure this in quite a few ways now. So it allows you to configure tables across a global scale. Uh, also a single table, so within your table class you can do it. Uh, for a single cell, so if you have a date cell, you can give it a date class or a precise cell. So if your user meets a certain condition, you can actually give a certain class or width, whatever, to that cell. So this is what this looks like. So the first example up here is how you would configure a table across any, all of your Rails apps. So this would be in an initializer, wherever you decide to put that. Uh, this is the second example. Anything that is on .table.class, 
uh, you can do dot table dot whatever. Uh, it's any attribute that applies to an HTML element. So, and all that, all this really does, it's an ordered options hash in Rails. So, it's it's basically a hash with some nice method syntax. So, compiles it, and and then the third example right here is when you want to just give it to a particular column. So, a lot of times. You may have a, an email column that you want to give it a particular class. You want to change the color of it, whatever. Um, that's what this does. And the fourth example is, let's say you have a user of a particular type and you want to give them a different color or something like that. Um, if you do a block syntax within Tablecloth, the first uh, you return an array. And the first element of the array is your value of the column. So what is displayed within it? And the second element of the array is uh, any, any TD op attributes you want to give it. So you can change class, style, whatever you like. That's, that's included. Cool. Uh, custom columns. This was one that was, this is where it starts to get really interesting because tables, um, you can repeat things quite a bit when you're Outputting a date, for example, I mentioned that earlier. Uh, custom columns aim to solve this. So you can actually generate as many columns as you like, and you can use them with your, within your table wherever you like. Uh, and custom columns take, they require a value method on instance, and they take two parameters. They take object and view. Uh, object is your, whatever it is in that row, user, package. And the second is the view context. So view dot image path, whatever, anything within uh, action view. And the reason you see a view dot raw is also is because view dot image tag will return HTML and you don't want to escape that. So that's why that exists. Um, my talk's very short. <laughs> I, uh, this was actually set up as a lightning talk. I was, I was behind a dead programmer. Um, but, yeah. Which might you have like 12 minutes. Uh, yeah. Five minute talk. Right. <laughs> How many cats do you have? How many cats do I have? I have one. He's a Maine Coon cat, and he's the size of a dog. Uh, <laughs> is, is, there any, is there any questions about this? Or? Can we see an example of it being used in the view or something? Yes, sure. Oh, actually, I have a great example. I was actually going to include this in. Uh, my in my lightning talk, but I actually decided to. Oh, this is a pain. Um, I decided to bring back the 90s and early 2000s and recreate a uh, table view layout with tablecloth. <laughs> um, so I actually created a little mini website. <laughs> so That's we can. Oh, well, that's what it looks like. Come uh, <laughs> over I can't, I can't. See. Okay, tables. Evan's sitting right there. <laughs> what am I supposed to be doing wrong? I'm writing some tests. <laughs> I believe. Right, right. I actually, I, I changed the adapter, I changed the connection adapter to PG because I put this on Heroku. So that's why you're seeing it. It's not because I suck. Um, <laughs> so here's, you would, here's an actual real world example of where you would say, let's do a content table. It's kind of convoluted because we're making an actual table layout. Um, but within the index, uh, that one, this is how you would pass in data. So a simple table four and your array or really any enumerable object that responds to dot each, um, and width. So width container table. Uh, that will render this table with that table definition for every single uh, object within that array. So really, really clean syntax. Um, Another great, yes? Do we need to define container table? What happens if we don't specify? If you don't, uh, bad things will happen. I actually did have this thought uh, a day or two ago where I think it would be really great if you could actually just pass in any data and it would figure out all of the possible columns and then display the data there. Uh, the reason I didn't do that is because uh, my biggest reason for this is because I'm always doing user tables for some reason. 
and I didn't want to have the automatic ability to, let's show the, the salt of a password. So that's why that feature has kind of been left out, and I went more for an explicit approach for tables. Um, yeah, that's for that. Uh, another cool thing that I haven't actually talked about is you can actually define your own presenters. So this is in document mostly because it's not completely fleshed out, but it does exist in the current master branch, is you are able to define how a table is rendered. So it gives you the ability to render your header, your body, and that's it. So you could actually generate tables with divs if you wanted to. Or if you wanted to, if you wanted to make tables with sort columns, you could define your own presenter and that tell it how to generate that HTML, and it would render that. And the way that the context up here would, you, it, the way that would work is it has using, and then you give it a presenter class that inherits from another tablecloth DSL. Uh, any other questions on this? For me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this was written with TDD, just so if you're wondering. <laughs> um, Sorry, I'm, not, I'm the only talk that didn't talk about TDD. Uh, cool. Well, if you have no questions, uh, this is on GitHub right now and also RubyGems, gem install, tablecloth, table underscore cloth, uh, version 0 0.20. Um, kind of a pet project of mine. If you have any feedback, questions about it, I'm on Twitter. I'm, you can email me. A couple of people have emailed me already. Um, yeah, I hate tables, so I hope that you guys uh, share that loathing with me and you could use this gem to help you resolve that. <laughs> <laughs>